Totally smokes. We're going. I am tying the articulated Crelex. It's a Chuck Craft pattern. <clears throat> I suspect that most people know what this one is. In the event you don't, I swear to God, get everything lined up and then just start doing whatever the hell I was going to do anyways. This is sort of the the bigger bigger version. It's three inches long. That's on a size two Yamagatsu S. Four long two XL. Cheat sheet. S eleven. 4L, 2H. Brass eyes. I put some, depending on what I'm doing, if, if I'm going three inches, I'll put a couple wraps just up in front of UV copper polar chenille. Um, one, because I think it looks awesome. Two, just to give it some bulk, because this Krennic flash slims down, and it, it has a, a really cool property of as it slims down and moves through the water, it, it's just, it's not flashing, then it's, then it's super flashy, and it sort of looks like fish scale. So another thing to think about throughout doing this is to not have, now on the, on the standard single, having that stark delineation is, how Chuck designed it and it it does add contrast and a from a taper perspective some nice wiggle in the back it, it also maximizes your profile up here without fouling in here <clears throat> in here so that's another thing to be cautious of you wouldn't want to tie in up here and have flash back in here. It's not bucktail, you know, it, it'll get wrapped around that hook if what is behind the hook bend, generally, you know, easy rule of thumb, exceeds what is in front or is even some, you know, greater than 50% of what's in front. I am so far off the rails already. So, Let's get back off the rails. This is what we're tying. And this is, man, that, that Crelex just, <clears throat> I think, pounds fish. I'm not sure. Getting up to the bigger sizes of, of doing a, well, That was just a Crelex that fell out of the, the Chuck Diesel. Changer. Some filler. Lots of crank. <clears throat> Anyways, as you're tying this to leave it sort of scraggly, uh, there's a guy with the Instagram handle lacquerhead I think that's right he just did the the top with Krennic and the bottom was sort of muted and the and the top was it was tapered it looked great but it wasn't it wasn't this stark these stark lines so totally not necessary and a lot of this is based on just developing the taper that is going to slim down pretty significantly. So we use UV chenille up front uh, to get that that minnow, minnowy, small brown trouty shoulders. But yeah, you can you get to play around with this one. I would say err on tying in more and longer because you can trim this thing down.
This is a size. Did I get the right one? I think I did. Size 10. A-Rex. Universal Stinger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, there's a number associated with it, but... Tail. We're going to do 1.5-ish shank length. Again, more is not a bad thing here. We're going to base a lot of the subsequent ties on this tail. So given the air on more, you really can't air on more if you're judging and, and basing everything off of a, a little wimpy tail. Option to put in the bigger ones more than the number of wraps I'm about to put in of like a medium. This is maybe the small. No, this is a medium. UV polar chenille. You can do it from the back, but it, it makes a pretty, all the fibers, and this goes for body tubing, this goes for bucktail tie-ins, all the fibers in the front are gonna lay over everything here. So you're, it's not that you're just developing taper here, you're, you're starting to stack as you are tying stuff in, which is all materials, but um, chenille on, on a fly that would otherwise be pretty flattened in the presence of water it does make a big difference and it's not just on the movement it, it's it's on the actual what cannot compress in the water so another option is instead of this if you really want something under there which you, you don't need at all you can just tie this Tie that tail in, go up here. It's feeling super naked, which it does for me. I'll do a little bit of ice dub, but I'll also. Not leave my thread wraps exposed. And glue a piece or two of that chenille down. Not intentional, but I don't care. This fly is just one of those, you know, there's the Creelex, so let's let's see what happens if we make it bigger. The first time I tied it, it sucked. And I, I will touch on why. But I did, I was able to salvage good way to save fingers and get your measurements all squared away. It's just to reverse tie that and save some material as well along the way. I do that a lot with craft fur, even if, if I'm not proper reverse tying. Well, I guess it is a proper reverse tie. If you can't tell, I cut materials using predefined measurements some might say I prepared materials before tying this this is the third attempt today we will 
we'll see. Starting off pretty much the same. It's dark outside and my five-year-old is sleeping. And... Good. DSLR, card full. We are going to... Select and erase. Hmm. There's no chance I'm restarting this one. <laughs> and given that this is the the one we're keeping you probably have an idea of what this I, I I'm, I'm going to try to put some clips of this morning in can you sure this one yeah. thank you Two cameras. You know, there are, there are some, what are the, you know, it's a project or someone at work or, I don't know, a fly, a video, trying to film yourself putting flashy shit onto a hook to demonstrate value. So people say, hey, what's going on with him? I should go fish with him. Whatever it is that you're doing. Sometimes. Some of them are just bastards. This is the content. This is the content we're in need of in this world. These are probably too short. Nah, that's pretty good. So one of the reasons the first one I tied sucked is that my bottom ties were too dense. I also used maybe baitfish emulator. It was a chenille that just there was too much bulk. And it started, this is the reason why when I'm tying changers, I'll either intentionally tie things like on the bottom and, and do a little eh, to, to keep materials off from, especially thick hooks, from clumping up on the hook. And with this one in particular, there's everything collapses so well and uh, to such a, a high degree that when things do bunch up on that hook, it, it the the keel from the hook bend and the metal on the hook because we're just using a cone head on front without a keel I started using a fish mask to sort of override the fact that there's really no buoyancy differences but thinking instead of just fixing a mistake Tying with much less material on the bottom. And you can go, you can go pretty sparse on this fly. I personally want to give them a target. And, and again, after all this stuff goes through and you know, you may want to make it more of a, a high and tight type profile, you can trim that chenille down a little bit. If you put in a bunch back here and it just looks like eh, go in and you know move move this and do that except for the whole thing like you can after a fly is done you're swimming it and something's not right especially with synthetics go in there and I mean bring bring some scissors all 
I mean, this morning, I was cutting pieces of a changer off. This guy. With my pliers that have wire cutters, but wrong tool for the job. Front hook. Is possibly not. Yeah. Trout Predator. Size 2. And mind you, this is the A Rex. Stinger, size 10. Trout Predator, size 2. I'm not going to make any excuses for this. That's just, that's the way it is. If you want to make the front hook longer, go for it. But to me, the front hook is the headshot, which just doesn't happen. And it's also keel, weight, momentum. We're going to use a, a brass cone here with the UV chenille especially with those back wraps it's it's a little less sinky than one might think with, with just metal so stout front hook um, it won't break when I set it into a bunch of rocks prior to donating it to a tree I also I want it I want it jigging How? This card's full. I should have tried to show that one. Here we go. This this is why it's full. This is why everyone's waiting with bated breath. Those are swifts under a bridge. The amount of stuff, some of it ends up being cool. Actually, that one might be. Gotta keep that one. All right, where where are we at? This is so par for the course. Free space, one point one gigs. That's just not enough. Yeah, one of these that I just deleted was it just geese. Not doing anything. But there was some part of me, actually all of me that said, oh yeah, I'm going to record these geese. Someone, there was a, a local guy fishing. He actually called me out on it. So he, he, that he wished all of them would die or that he wanted to kill all of them. Damn, dude. I mean, I get it. They are honking for like two months. Loud. Oh. I don't know what. There must have been a big video there. Okay, and now we can wait for that camera or the battery to die. I'm okay with not being good at this right now, by the way. If if I just jumped into being awesome at making time videos or anything related to YouTube, that wouldn't make very much sense. So, I'm going to stumble along the way. 
holy smokes, this is not a long flight of tie. Maybe I'll do a little highlight. I should put something on the front of that. Conehead, medium. Use your judgment. Probably could have just unwrapped that or cut it all off, but I didn't. And per usual, when I'm tying flies that aren't, not all the time, when I'm tying flies that are not using some sort of buoyancy or water displacement, I want it to jig I think that that up and down I mean it's jigs are that's a whole category for a reason and less that we're, I'm still with this thing I'm still banging the banks with this I mean again you can fish streamers in a bunch of different ways blah 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 but that jig when you strip kill, strip kill, tight line, all that other stuff that I'm sure I've covered in one of the streamer myths. Just bang the banks. It's a numbers game. It's not. Or, I don't know. It, it becomes a numbers game if you're just casting some trash fly at the bank constantly. That, that sounds like a numbers game. A fish will eat it, eventually. Falling apart at the seams. So when I'm switching to this, yeah, I'm trying to get down. But it's it's just it's a different trigger. Profile's a little smaller. This one in particular, relative to the Peanut Envy or some of the crafty peanutty jobbers. Very bright. All right, folks on my boats, folks on my boat, folks plural, boat singular, for right now, and, you know, this year. Some folks on Instagram, I get asked what beads I use. I'm big on the articulation point, because if, if this thing's fouling constantly, then what the hell's the point? And I really don't dislike, I was watching a Schultz video with Jesse, check that, with Hughes. James Hughes? Tying the fleeing cray. And he was, he was tying it on, the articulation point is a shank. And then Chris Willen's doing the, you know, he's making, effectively putting in, um, twisting up. Wire, like you would with a bucktail. And then tying that back. And then, yeah, Hughes is putting the, the shank back as the connection so that Whatever. I mean, I, I just, I know based on where I like to fish these things. I like to fish the smaller and the, and the jiggier type flies in faster water with, with tight margins. Um, see streamer myths. The fly doesn't matter. I'm talking about these like I've recorded and published them, but I haven't. So articulation points. I like to bring this one back, put a bunch of wraps in. It's kind of on the side. This is 0 0.024 and then five millimeter beads that are 
Mandala Crafts. The content we all need. Four and five millimeter beads, 1,500 pieces for 10 bucks. So the .024 fits into all but like the size six and down, the size six B10S and down. You know, any smaller than that, you go 018, and at that point, I go to the four millimeter beads. The reason I like this 024 with the five millimeter beads is the diameter of the wire and the diameter of the beads, the inside diameter, along with the outside diameter. The outside diameter is the, the spacing, the inside diameter gives us our loop right there and it's it's big enough to have it not be super pinchy which can cause this thing to get warped and do a bunch of weird stuff but small enough to where this this bead doesn't want to come all the way over the folded up wire so regardless of how tight how big you want your loop how small you want your loop it's it's going to allow you to it gives you some freedom here because you can do this you know give yourself a full beads worth and not worry about this bead slipping back and compressing that eye when the bead comes back and, and chunks onto the eye it, you may as well just tie this back and put a bunch of wraps of thread around the the wire there, there's no benefit to the beads at that point If I lost you along the way there, you're in good company, myself included. Articulation, I'm sure I'll do this in every trout streamer video, but basically just figure eights and I don't know if that's a consistent way I do it. I'm sure I'll... No, I won't. I won't ever see if that's the same, but it might be. I just like to stiffen up that that wire junction so that it's not slipping off back in there. And tying them separately, plus a little bit of some some going on right there, it just gives you there's stiffness at the point of it coming back. So you're not getting, you know, off off the side and the fish starts going bonkers and the, you know, the both of them start twisting all the way down. Again, this thing's going to the trees. I mean, before any of that stuff happens, this is a goner. If you're tying like a, I'll do like a size six in the back and eight in the front, like a normal six, not this, whatever, whatever we got going on here. Daiichi 2461, size six in the back, uh, or size eight in the back, six in the front, like a mini. So, and, and at that point you can just do one up front just because it's, that the whole thing is smaller. So I want to get back to about here, about halfway, maybe a little more. Again, recognizing that you can always cut it off. Fun way to save your fingers there. Put in three turns, go back to two. It feels like I'm really, I'm, I'm trying to put this hook into my fingers. So 
I'm just spreading this out so that it's not clumped up right on the hook bend. I'm going to end up, I, I could fold that back in reverse tie, but I don't need the bulk. Back hook wanted to get me. Got some little magnets, a little neodymium. I should know that. Dyne or dime. Just glued right to the Renzetti. And this piece of copper is going to go short on the, on the inside tie about twice as much as what's on the bottom. So starting to, well, I should say continuing to put more stuff on top. Don't need to whip. Can't believe the DSLR is still recording. This is still going. I'm guessing I don't have audio at this point. Now, Copper, UV chenille, or gold, or silver. There's a bunch of different colors you can use. Black, that'd be cool. Doing silver on the bottom with the, like the dark bronze krennic. For the, for the larger ones, you can do... I'll do two ties back here, and then one, two, three, up front. Wrap this up, pop one back, wrap it up, another one back. And for each tie, I'm, I'm shortening this. Right? That is going to be longer than this. I'm shortening this, but I'm shortening it less than the amount I'm shortening the tie-in gaps. So I'm tying more frequently, more densely, but with shorter fibers. So it starts to stack up bulk up front. That, that really charge the battery pack you're not going to get me today plus all this stuff's easy You're not going to get me today. You're not going to get me for the third time today. Touching wraps or not. Oh, I just got goosebumps. That rear hook. Just really. It's just, just kissing my finger. Oh. Fearful. I've gotten soft. Shorter, thicker. And then with this tie, you can, you know, put it down and hold it. You can also go straight in the middle. And give yourself a little or make this wider if you're trying to go around more like that and start that tie in back here It'll come around if you want it to cover the whole top I kind of do I'll also put more Krennic it's a little longer and I might even leave some not not super neatly trimmed to emphasize how much I like to party if 
the intent is to I don't know, te teach folks to tie, but de definitely to garner to encourage, facilitate, foster interest in my guiding and I'm saying stuff like yeah it's even that chronic on flash so everyone knows I like to party I just I don't know I don't know what I'm thinking sometimes that's not true I just I think dumb shit's funny gold and since we are keeping the bottom more sparsely tied it's about the same amount as that first tie and then because I really like to party, we're going to do one, possibly two wraps of, yeah, we're going to two wraps of that UV chenille in front. Yeah, and if you're, if you're looking at this and just wondering, how could this catch fish I mean check the b-roll or the intro footage right which I'm pretty sure was I'm gonna try to I, I've amassed so much footage of a bunch of awesome stuff that without this context of like this is what I do I like time flies I'm a guide I also fish a lot here are these flies that I'm fishing and catching fish with. Without that context, all this awesome footage is less meaningful. But yeah, it, it catches fish. It's fun to tie. It's different. It's one of the reasons I like this and, and, and the Creelex and not the same presentation. I mean, th this is a giant one. But most of them are about half this size. That's just, that is a lot of hook. Yeah, two inch Creelex. It's a different presentation. It, it's a little jiggy, nothing. It just, it slims down to a line, just like a minnow. It's an awesome fly. If you fish for reds, redfish, not reds like the tailwater career makers reds like redfish yeah we're just gonna sneak a little UV in there I had one that was just copper and silver and oh yeah oh yeah that's full and or dead whatever and yeah I mean it was like probably 10 to 15 fibers on the back just hang, it was just getting munched. And it kept getting munched. And so we didn't change it. Well, one-eyed one -eyed Bill or something like that. I forget what. Fishing with John Irwin in Charleston. If you're ever there, look him up. The articulated Creelex that really wants to be planted into my hand. I'm not going to let you. You've been challenging enough. I feel like I might ruin a... A striper on this maybe tomorrow I went out today a 
It's like 48 with 20 mile an hour gusts. Really, there's got to be, okay. Some sort of trigger for when this thing focuses. Time up or don't. Whatever you want to do. Have fun. Are you going to pick me up? Today? Yeah. I sure am. Yeah. The articulated Crelex. After you pick me up from school, can we go to a place where we like wallabies? A place where it's like wallabies or wallabies? Wallabies. Hmm. We'll see. Okay. Time to go make breakfast. Okay.